but to Malaysia now. Malaysians will vote this weekend in what political analysts are calling the closest election since the country's independence. The last election in 2008 delivered a shock for the party that's ruled since 1957. It lost its two-thirds majority in the parliament to a coalition formed around the country's former deputy prime minister, Anwar Ibrahim. Mr Anwar was arrested in 1998 and jailed for six years after falling out with then Prime Minister Mahathir Mohamad. He was arrested again in 2004 but is now the unofficial leader of the opposition coalition. His daughter, Nurul Iza Anwar, won a seat in the parliament in 2008. She spoke to me from Kuala Lumpur and said she's cautiously optimistic about this weekend's election. If you look at the polling results, the latest one clearly shows that Anwar Ibrahim is now more popular and seen as a more credible prime minister versus Najib. And this is why this election, they're putting everything to ensure they remain in power. When you say they're putting everything in, are you concerned about fraud? Partly. You know, we, we were quite shocked by the scattered postal voting exercise. And, you know, it's quite alarming because in some constituencies, there were no observers because of the change in timing by the election commission. Additionally, um, you know, you're talking about a lot of overseas voters, they found some markings on their ballot paper. So, of course, we, we've raised concerns. Additionally, you're looking at increased incidents of, of political violence against the opposition, and we are concerned that the voters will be too scared to come out. Well, let's look at the big picture. How would Malaysia change if your coalition were to win this weekend? You are talking about, you know, right now, the refusal of the Najib government to eradicate the corruption. Additionally, you're talking about the use of the politics of race and, and fear. I mean, you are talking about a prime minister, you know, fielding one of the worst, most tarnished list, you know, of candidates who have utilized racist rhetoric, you know, like never before. So for me, a Pakatan win signals hope for change. A Pakatan win showcases that we have a coalition that and will implement policies for the benefit of all Malaysians. You say that you'd like to see a more open and free society, but one of the three parties in your coalition is insisting on Hadud or Sharia law. How comfortable are you personally with this? No, I think it's very important to understand. We are a coalition of equal partners, and we have a common policy framework. We have implemented this framework more than three years back, even when the issue of Hudud popped up. There is nothing that the Malaysians should fear, except, of course, the negative propaganda by the BN uh, government. But specifically on the issue of Sharia or, or Hadud law, is that a policy in your coalition? It's certainly the policy of one of the key parties, isn't it? The more recent um, manifesto by the Islamic Party clearly states that their main objective is to implement a welfare-based state. Similarly, there's no mention of the things you stated in the common policy framework. But the problem is, you know, we keep on being attacked. So it's, but, but you're saying that Sharia law will not come in if you win government? It is not in a common policy framework. And we're not denying that there are certainly um, Islamic scholars in the more conservative areas in, in the northern Malaysia. But that is the beauty of Malaysia. We have such a rich diversity. And we have successfully governed in the four states as a coalition. It's not like uh, an, an untested formula. <laughs> you know, it's bringing that, that change onto the federal level. The fear of Islamic law, though, has sparked rioting and arson attempts already. Uh, are you concerned that whipping this up could mean ethnic divisions resurface in a deadly manner? Of course. You know, we've, we've, we've faced this since, uh, you know, years. For me, this time around, I, I feel very optimistic. I think each coalition member, each uh, leader has understand there's so much at stake, you know, the hope of many Malaysians in our hands. There is a huge increase in first-time voters this election. To what extent could the political involvement of young Malaysians change the direction of your country? Oh, they are one of the key makers. I mean, you're talking about almost 30% of the first-time voters who are going to be young people. And the point is, you're looking at a more discerning, more critical uh, group. They have access to social media. They might be denied coverage of the opposition in the traditional media, but they certainly get access to our videos, our leaders, our speeches um, in, in the social media. So I believe, you know, what we have to do is ask that they come together because 
the future that they will inherit is going to be a bleak one without political reform. You were very young when you were elected in 2008. What influence do you think that first arrest and imprisonment of your father in 1998 has had on your own political development? You know, I, I was uh, quite an introvert, really. I think, you know, what happened in 1998 made me own up to being one of the child of the reformacy generation and to understand that the democratic institutions in this country went abused. So I think it really left an indelible mark you were only 18 at the time that your father was first imprisoned, and at the time you were the daughter of the Deputy Prime Minister. It must have been a huge shock to you. I, I think you know, it would be a, a huge shock to anyone, really. Um, you know, his political imprisonment was especially challenging, not only for me, but for my mother and the rest of the family. For me and my, my sisters, we went to government school. We were born in a government hospital. And, you know, what's important is that we are, we're not the only one who suffered. You must understand when you use the, you know, the judiciary, the media to condemn and victimize a man, you know, there's so many others who were also also victimized. There were so many scores of others who were detained under the Internal Security Act. Norita Anwar, some dismiss you as simply your father's proxy, his stand-in. What do you say to convince them otherwise? I mean, I don't really focus on such attacks. They've been doing it for years. What's important is you know, what I do with the position I have as a member of parliament, because at the end of the day, it is my name on the ballot paper. It it is me who makes the decision to partake and be part of active politics. And I will not back away from that, you know. We are not doing this for my father. I mean, I love my father dearly. But we are doing this because we love our country, because we want a better future. And I think that's a message that the young uh, should replicate. You know, say what you like. Uh, You can't stop me now. That's Malaysian MP Nurul Izzah Anwar, who's the daughter of the country's former Deputy Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim. She was speaking to me from Kuala Lumpur, and you can listen to the full interview on our website.